The Dr. Taz Show. The podcast, Dr. Taz. Superwoman Wellness. Here's Dr. Taz. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Superwoman Wellness, where you know I'm determined to bring you back to your superpowered self. Now, those of you who know me know I'm always trying to connect the dots. And many times we've talked about the role that trauma, our emotions play in our health and our chemistry and how we're able to move forward. PTSD is real, it lives in our body, it creates inflammation and so much more. Well, joining me today is a doctor with such great information about PTSD and a novel procedure. Dr. Eugene Lipov it was born in 1958. He's a physician researcher and board certified anesthesiologist who specializes in intervention-based pain management in the Chicago area. He's best known for his treatment of post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD using the stellate ganglion block or SGB. The injection-based technique seems to reboot the body's sympathetic system, helping to reset PTSD's patient's reaction or overreaction to stimuli or their fight or flight response by resetting the sympathetic nervous system and the central nervous system to its pre-trauma state. This is important stuff, guys. I see this every day in practice where this tra traumatic state really does create disease. In 2016, the Pentagon approved funding for a study at three army medical centers citing SGB, remember that's the stellate ganglion block, potential to be a huge game changer for many of the affected people with PTSD, whether from combat, sexual assault, or other trauma. In 2017, the U.S. Army commissioned the first large-scale randomized trial of the procedure. Dr. Lipov, welcome to the show. Congratulations on creating something that can give answers. What led you down this road? Give us a little bit of background and insight. Thank you. Well, thanks for having me on. Um, so actually, it all started with hot flashes. So I had a patient that had severe hot flashes, and I sent him to my brother, since I'm a pain physician, I don't do hot flashes. So he said, eh, you know, it's like he tried to help her and nothing would work. And he said, you know, you take care of this thing called CRPS, complex regional pain syndrome. Mm -hmm. burn. And he thought, uh, if you do a stellar ganglion block, which you do for the burning hand, it should take the whole body heat away. I was like, ah, I don't think that's true. He said, ah, try it. So we tried it and it worked really well. So I published on that. And it was working very well since it's been replicated by a number of institutions. So Chicago Tribune came by and they said, you know, that's interesting. Tell us more about it. And they were very nasty about it because they, they said it works for half, but you don't know how it works. So we don't want nothing to do with it. And it went downhill from there. Mm. So it gave me a lot of encouragement to see why it works. So as I was trying to figure out why it worked, I came across a paper from Finland that were doing T2 clipping in the chest, take away head sweats, and they found PTSD stopped. Hmm. That's quite interesting. It turns yeah. out the connection from the chest to the neck and up to the brain, and that's why I treated my first patient in 2005 that led to more publication and treatment. So my first publication came out in 2008. So this is located in the chest, but it's connected to the brain, essentially, correct? A ganglion, a fight and flight ganglion. Mm -hmm. Then it goes to the neck. So when stellar ganglion block is done, it's done in the neck. Ah, done in the neck itself. So brain. what type of results have you seen? Tell, tell us what sort of happened. You know, are these patients that had already gone through counseling and therapy and you know hypnosis and some of these other modalities that we talk about for PTSD. What, what did you see following this procedure or the patients that have done this? Here's an example of a young lady. Uh, so this lady had a severe sexual assault over a long period of time at a childhood age. And then the patient then uh, 10 years of psychotherapy and she was not making progress. Uh -huh. So one block, and in 30 minutes, she felt that she did more uh, progress than she did for the whole time. Wow. And the reason that happened is because she was able to access her emotion and her memory, and she was able to process it. And then doing more psychological therapy following that was very helpful for her. So when a patient gets one block, do they sometimes need a second or a third, or, or, or is it a one, one and done type thing? 
uh, there's no such thing as one and done in PTSD, which I'm sure you know. Right. It allergy. It depends on what kind of stress they run into. If they have more stressful episodes, things can come back. Mm. Give you a direct answer. The right-sided block, we start with the right side, and we do a dual block, one here and one higher up. That seems to increase efficacy. So with a single procedure, it seems to work 80 to 85% of the time. If it doesn't work, then we we'll switch another day to the left side. So if you do that, the success rate, meaning the significant PCL reduction of PTSD checklist, um, that seems to occur in high 80s, maybe even low 90s. It depends, you know, as far as longevity, how long it lasts is variable. So mm -hmm. every procedure per person is about two and a half. Gotcha. So talk to us a little bit about the chemistry of PTSD. What's happening? Is it just fight or flight? Is it all cortisol? Are there other neurotransmitters involved? Like what, what's happening? Where's the injury in the brain? Give us a sense of that. Because many people think, oh, I should be over this, or I should have been able to move on, and, you know, all these other ideas that they have. How would you, what would you say to them? You can snap out of it, is that what you're saying, right? Exactly. Like, oh my gosh, you know, it, it was five years ago. Why am I, you know, why am I still there? Or there, or somebody they love might be saying that, hey, it was five years ago. Why are you still thinking about this, you know? So what would you say to, to those people and those families? Fair enough. So, in fact, I'll, I'll tell you, it's a very interesting time that we are, meeting on uh, on zoom mm -hmm. so the answer is it's to me everything is meaning um when somebody has severe stress sympathetic kicks in fight and flight kicks in and when that happens at the same time there seem to be uh ngf produced nerve growth factor in the brain it's mm -hmm. travel from the brain to the sympathetic ganglia in the neck once it hits the ganglia, it produces sprouting, which is new nerve growth. Mm -hmm. That model. As long as that sprouting persists, norepinephrine level is increased. So if you take CSF or fluid around the brain and analyze it for norepinephrine, it seems to be twice as high compared to people who do not have PTSD. Mm. Wow. So this, people are going to have symptoms. So what the block seems to do is reverse the sprouting. It's called pruning. Mm -hmm. Once sympathetic extra nerve fibers, norepinephrine reduces, and that's why people can sleep and they don't get overreactive. All the signs that you're describing typically in PTSD is overreactivity, right? So when people cannot sleep, they cannot stay still. They're overreactive to stimuli either sound, touch, whatever. And they can't sleep, they got nightmares. Um, so the whole thing about uh, Dr. Agbar is a friend of mine. He's a famous psychiatrist. I don't know if you know him. I know the name, yep. He came up with the term Stockholm Syndrome. Mm -hmm. Yep. But the term he believes should be used instead of PTSD should be PTSI, post-traumatic stress injury. Mm. Meaning it's biologic. You can see it. On a scanner, if you got the right scanner, you can see it, and you can do a biologic treatment such as stellate. In wow. fact, very right now, if you can help me distribute it, that'd be very helpful. I would love to. And so, what type of scan can you see this on? You need you need specialized scans such as fMR, functional yeah. MR. Yeah. A amygdala overactivation mm -hmm. compared to normal controls. You can also do a PET scan, positron scan, mm -hmm. and then limbic system overactivation, which can be deactivated using stellate. There was at least a small study in Long Beach where they did PET scans on the most severe PTSD patients they had. They do stellate ganglion block, and you can see a reduction of the amygdala activation right after that, concurrent with symptom reduction. So, so all of this, is this the only way to lower, like, what if someone out there is listening and they know they have PTSI, which I'm going to call it that from now on. Um, first of all, I'm thinking of the a tremendous value in being able to show somebody an image, right? Like this is what's happening to you versus you have a psychiatric problem or something like that, you know? So I think that's incredibly powerful, but will insurance cover the PET scan or no? Will they cover that? 
time. They don't cover. They won't cover it. Yeah. Cover medication, medicinal treatments, and uh, psychiatric intervention. Gotcha. Okay. So let's say, uh, you know, patient understands this is happening. Is the SGB or the stellate ganglion block their only option? What other things would you recommend for lowering this norepinephrine or bringing this response down so that they can heal? I, I see the other side of this. I've seen where PTS I patients can't sleep, they develop autoimmune disease, they develop cancer, you know, they have severe, deep, deep depression that nothing touches. What do you, what do you say? What are what else is in the toolbox for these folks? Well, there's a number of things you can do. One is I think yoga is great. Mm -hmm. Yoga activates the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve deactivates sympathetic system. So I think that's helpful. Exercise is helpful. Anything you produce endorphins, I think would be helpful. Mm -hmm. Meditation is great. Uh, sometimes ketamine infusions help. Huh. Uh, if, uh, can, we have now uh, my uh, partner in, in this and I have combined ketamine and stellate together. Sometimes, oh. well, for, um, for CPTSD or PTSI, which is complex post-traumatic stress disorder or complex post-traumatic stress injury. <laughs> Ketamine. And so how, and that's done IV, like IV ketamine or? Ketamine comes in a number of formats. Okay. I believe IV is by far the best. There right. is name, oral. It also depends. There's many, many ketamine clinics now. Some are superb and some not so superb. Mm, interesting. And then uh, you also mentioned MDMA and psilocybin. Talk about that a little bit with us. I, I don't work so much with those things. Yeah, actually, I don't work with ketamine either. But tell us a little bit about how those play into this mix. Well, MDMA, I'm not a fan of. In the 70s, MDMA was used clinically. And control was lost of that. And a number of people have died of open MDMA is basically ecstasy. Mm -hmm. So I'm not um presbyn and you know mushrooms uh i think it offers something uh also i'm not really an expert in that my particular expertise is stella gangland block mm -hmm. so i i am a chief medical officer for stella which is it's our organization that we're in 22 states now and we have two sites in australia our plan is to have high quality stella gangland block or our current protocols to be available with the people. Interesting. Got it. Yeah, I'm sure you saw that um, celebrity report recently with, I think it was Christina Anstead who did uh, mushrooms. She said she had essentially did mushrooms. Actually, Gwyneth Paltrow too, like they did mushrooms and it was a whole reset to the brain. Again, I haven't used mushrooms in that way. I don't know them well, but I know there's a lot of talk about trauma and how it resets and what you can do about it. So I, I find that to be interesting as well. Are there any like oral so solutions to this? Are there supplements? Are there medicines that you're a fan, herbs that you're a fan of that you've seen bring, you know, kind of this response down in a significant way, more than just sort of, you know, just, uh, you know, minor change, really making a, a difference there. Frankly, that's not my expertise. Okay. The good Telegangian block, what it seems to do is reduce the fight and flight system very selectively. Mm -hmm. Try to do it, if you take something like that, the block pressure is not going to be there. So you're not going to be around. Gotcha. So whenever you take something, uh, to me, if you take it by mouth, it affects the entire body. Right. And I'm not sure what the long term mushrooms will be used. What will be the effects? I, I, I'm not an expert in that, so I don't know. Gotcha. So if somebody out there is listening to us today, they have been through trauma, you know, that they can't kind of cross over or, or so embedded in their amygdala. What do you, t what would you say are their next steps? Do they come see you? Do they get a functional MRI? What, what would you advise them to do? Well, functional MRI would be nice, but I don't think that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, first thing you should do is, find a trauma-informed therapist, um, especially if it's uh, a woman, I think a female therapist would be better than a male therapist for that, because they're already so traumatized, you need to be, uh, I think, integrated. And maybe EMDR 
and appropriate psychotherapy will be will give appropriate effect. If you're stuck and you're making progress, especially what we see in a lot of patients, we get to see is they try to go to the therapist, they go there, but once they start to go make a breakthrough, they get overwhelmed and the body starts to shut down and they have difficulties with that. And that's where somebody like that, if you look up Stella Center, mm -hmm. he is center near you now or in your future. Or you can always fly to Chicago. I, I, you know, we have 80% of people I treat are from out of town. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine that. Well, that is wonderful. And if we want to get more involved in helping people with PTSI and really spreading awareness, I'm going to watch my own language moving forward. What do you, what do you suggest? I think you've got a nonprofit. Tell us a little bit about that as well. Yeah, it's called Erase PTSD Now. Um, it's ErasePTSDNow.org is the website. So no donation too big, no donation too small. Um, we'd like to get as treat as many people as we can. We'd like to treat um, sexual abuse survivors, military people. One of our new focuses is uh, military families. So the husband goes to war, let's say, comes back. He gives PTSD to his wife, and it's a mess for everyone, including the children. So we've done children as well, usually over the age. So we're trying to get as many funds as we can to treat as many people as we can. That's amazing. And do you know where the military is currently with their trials? Are they using this more consistently for veterans and for their families? Uh, I think it depends where you ask. For example, Fort Bragg does a number of those procedures. Mm -hmm. a, I'm not quite sure the status is. There is another study that's going to be conducted, which the problem is with that study, I think it will probably be four to five years out. Gotcha. Offering yeah. that is going to make that much of a difference. The study I'm trying to get done, and I, again, we're trying to raise some serious funds for that in a big university, is to do functional MRI before, stellate, functional MRI after. Mm -hmm. Studies to date have depended on placebo control, which is not possible with stellate. Because when you do stellate and people have a droopy eyeball, mm -hmm. you know something has active or inactive substance. That's not studied. Gotcha. Interesting. And then one more question: the spec scans. Have you seen those? Um, you know, what do you, where's the role of that technology versus the functional MRI and those type of things? I'm not a neuroscientist. However, we have been fortunate enough to work with Dr. Amen. Mm -hmm. And and we were able to see some um, changes before and after Stella getting them blocked. We just, oh, wow. but spec scan is a nuclear isotope scan looking at the blood flow to the brain. That also is demonstrates physiologic changes in the brain instead of this amorphous PTSD. Gotcha. I love it. I think, I think it's. The future, unfortunately, with more and people, more and more people are really having traumatic events in their life and needing answers and needing options for sure. So thank you so much. If somebody out there watching or listening today wants to learn more or wants to get involved, what's the best way for them to do that? Uh, well, if, if you want to get treated, you can look up uh, StellaCenter.com. If you'd like to donate to our not-for-profit or participate, maybe be on the board of directors, uh, depending on what your skill set is, uh, maybe help us promote the message, it's erasedptsdnow.org. Gotcha. All right. Such an important cause, such an important message. Thank you, Dr. Lupov, for joining me today. I really appreciate it. I see these patients in clinic and... It's, it's tough. It breaks my heart. We know trauma lives in the body. We know it lives in our cells and we have to work aggressively and actively to help release it. So anything that's giving, giving patients answers, I think is incredible. So thank you again for your work and for your time today. I appreciate it. Maybe we can collaborate. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And for all of you out there, watching and listening to this episode of Superwoman Wellness. I hope you enjoyed it. Please remember to rate and review it and share it with your friends. And of course, spread the word about PTSI, not PTSD. And I will see you guys next time.